One of the great Nobel laureates who had won the Nobel Peace Prize in physics was interviewed and asked what made him decide to become a scientist. And he went back to his childhood. He said every day when he came home after school, his mother wouldn't ask him, what did you learn today? His mother would ask him, what good question did you ask today? And he said, from an early age, being instilled with that interest in asking good questions was what ultimately led me to become a scientist. My friends, the gospel today is all about the questions. The two questions from the scholar of the law and the two questions from Jesus. It's all about the questions surrounding the parable. The first question comes from the scholar. What must I do to inherit eternal life? Now for us to understand this, my friends, when someone in Jesus' day would ask a question in a public forum like that, people would be suspicious because rarely was it so that you could gain information. It was usually a challenge. And in fact, the Gospel tells us that the scholar asked Jesus to test him. It was all about honor and shame. The scholar wanted to challenge Jesus, and if he could show his ignorance, that he wouldn't be able to answer the question, then his credibility would be taken away. And he would be given honor. Biblical scholars call that the challenge and repost. They use metaphors from fencing. You know, we got the Olympics coming up soon. Sometimes they will show the fencing on TV. Now, I don't know much about fencing, but I know some of the terms. You have the thrust. When one of them will use their sword and go after the other opponent, they'll do the thrust. And then you have the parry. The parry is when the opposite opponent tries to evade or block the attack. And then the opposite opponent then returns with the repost. So you get it? You got the thrust and you got the repost and the parry in the middle. And that's what's going on here. We have a verbal fencing going on between the scholar of the law and Jesus. And so the first thrust comes from the scholar. What must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus parries. Well, you're an expert of the law. How do you read it? And right away he answers. He quotes from Deuteronomy. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is Lord alone. Therefore you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your soul, with all your mind. And then he tacks on another quote from the book of Leviticus. And your neighbor as yourself. You see what Jesus did? He showed that this guy already knew the answer to the question. So he wasn't asking for information. He was trying to set Jesus up. It was a lie. He didn't even have to do the repost. The scholar reposted himself. Jesus won, scholar zero. But then the scripture says he wanted to justify himself, the scholar. In other words, he wanted to save face. He wanted to try to recoup some of the credibility that was taken away to get rid of some of the shame. And so he does another thrust. And who is my neighbor? And Jesus parries with the great parable of the Good Samaritan. And we know that story very familiar to us. And afterwards then, after the parry, Jesus does the repose. He asks the question, who among the three was neighbor to the victim? And the scholar says, the one who showed mercy. And Jesus says, exactly! Repost! 
You go and do the same. You see what Jesus did? He turned the table around. The scholar of the law was basically saying, how can I love my neighbor when I don't know who my neighbor is? I don't know my neighbor. Or maybe he's saying, this person can't be my neighbor because, you know, they don't share the same religion. Or they don't share my, the same political persuasion. Or they're not from the same financial bracket, or they're not of my same race, with all of the things that have been going on on the news lately, we can relate. They're not my neighbor. How can I know my neighbor? But Jesus is saying, that's not the question. You have the wrong question. The question is not, who is my neighbor? The question is, am I a neighbor? Am I the neighbor? Did I ever tell you the story about what happened to me at my previous parish, my first Christmas? If you have, I'll tell it to you again. Two weeks before Christmas at St. Joseph's. Now, you know Saint, where St. Joseph's is? On, on the south side of town, and it's in Midtown. Now, when I was there, I don't know what the statistics are today, but when I was there, Midtown had the highest crime rate in all of Pinellas County, and one of the highest in the, the entire state. And I was pastor there, and that was my first Christmas, two weeks before Christmas. And what we were doing, and what was part of the tradition, was that we were gathering toys for the underprivileged children. And I think they still do it. And the only place that I had to put those toys were in our parish hall. Now, our parish hall at that time was an old, dilapidated World War II barracks. It had more leaks than a sinking ship. Some of the windows couldn't completely close or they couldn't open. The door half the time couldn't either completely close or completely open half the time. I couldn't even lock it. But that's where and the only place I had to put the toys. And I thought, you know, these toys are for the community right here. Nothing will happen. Well, sure enough, in the middle of the night, they were all stolen. Not only were all the toys taken, but everything pretty much was taken from the hall. You know, they took it for drug money. And the lady that was in charge of all of that, she was all upset, rightly so. And she came up to me the next day and she said, Father, you know what we need to do? We need to tell the news. Now, she was probably thinking about what happened not too long before that. There was some, uh, you know, Little League team and all of their equipment was stolen, and it was on the news. And the community responded and gave them all new equipment. And she was saying, that's what we need to do. And I was, you know, trying to calm her down. I was saying, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Well, apparently she thought that my saying, yeah, yeah, I know, was go ahead and do it. So the next morning, as I'm coming to the church for 8 o'clock Mass, I'm turning the corner, and I'm walking over to the door, and there in the parking lot are not one, not two, but three news vans with their satellite dishes in the air, and cameramen, and correspondents out there, and they see me, and they all run up to me, and they have their microphones. Sir, we heard that all of the toys for the underprivileged children were stolen last night. Is that true? Thrust. And I was, you know, I was taken off guard. I mean, all I could say was, ugh. I said, yes. Well, they had it on the news at noon, at the evening news. They had it at the late night news. They had it at the morning news. And the diocese called me. 
When the diocese calls you, it's not a good thing. <laughs> Why didn't you t tell them to come to us? We have our communication department. And I said, I didn't know they were going to do this. Well, you know what happened? A few days later, well, actually, the next day after the news, I come into the, to the office. Of course, my, my secretary was part-time, so she wasn't there that morning. So I went in there, checked the, the messages on the phone. I had over 60 messages on the phone. People from all over Tampa Bay that wanted to give. Not only did I recoup all of the toys, I had all kinds of other items that they gave. I had, for instance, four brand new TV sets. You know what my problem was now? Where am I going to put all this? I don't want them to come back and say, oh, this is good, we got more stuff to steal. <laughs> so ultimately what I did is I put them, we have a basement in that old church, so we put all of that stuff down in the basement and we closed and somehow locked the door and we were able to give all of these toys to underprivileged children. Now, what happened was is the news people wanted to come back. They wanted to do a follow-up. They wanted to have a heartwarming story for Christmas. I bet you they knew that something like this was going to happen. And they called it, I found out, that they called this the kicker. You know, when you watch the news on TV, they don't want to end it. Most of the news is negative and, and you know, depressing. They never want to end, or usually they don't want to end on a bad or negative note. So they have a kicker. They want to have something positive. And so that was our story. They came and they, they followed up on this wonderful story and people's response. Now, I didn't get to see it, but I was told that the message was something like, strangers became friends. Evil was overcome by good. And selfless acts by good Samaritans are not gone, but alive and present in our community. My friends, it's not who is my neighbor. The question is, am I a neighbor? It's all about the question.